Hello everybody, today I'm very ill, so today I've decided to talk about one of my favourite movies of all time, and also I'm going to make you guys ill alongside with me, so we're equal. Tusk is probably one of the most insane movies ever made, and what's so great about it is that it's not even insane like for artistic purposes, it's just insane for the sake of being insane. Kevin Smith, the creator of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, took one look at sick body horror flicks like The Human Centipede and The Fly and said, you know what, I'm going to stop making stoner comedies and start making that but more. Tusk is what happens when the fly meets the human centipede, they get high together, and they're having a great time, but they also start having a mental breakdown. The film opens with our protagonist, Wallace Brighton, who is played by my personal favourite actor of all time, Justin Long. He runs a podcast with his friend Teddy, who's played by Haley Joel Osmond, and they both laugh at a video of a young man accidentally cutting off his own leg with a katana, nicknamed the Kill Bill Kid, which is an obvious reference to the Star Wars Kid. However, the Star Wars Kid didn't cut his leg off. Also, can we just talk about how bad these digital effects are here? So Wallace says on the podcast that he is going to travel to Canada to interview the Kill Bill kid. So he gets to the airport, talks to Harley from Epic Meal Time, and goes to Canada, only to realise that the Kill Bill kid committed suicide after the relentless bullying he received online, caused by people like Wallace. He heads to a bar where he talks to his girlfriend and talks about how he thinks that the Kill Bill kid was selfish for what he did, making him travel all the way up to Canada and for nothing. Wallace, you dickhead, how would you feel if you lost a leg? Foreshadowing. Wallace is annoyed that he does not have a person to interview in his podcast. However, he heads to the toilet and he notices a piece of paper in front of him. The note is from an old man named Howard Howe, who is offering a free room in his house for anyone who wants to stay. The only payment is that they must help around with some household chores and also listen to Howard's many stories. Wallace decides that he can use Howard's stories for the podcast, so he heads over to his house to interview him. After he arrives, we meet Howard, an old wheelchair-bound man played by Michael Parks, who is in Kill Bill Part 2, which makes the Kill Bill reference earlier a lot cooler. So Howard begins telling Wallace about the time he met Ernest Hemingway at sea, but also talks about how he was once saved by a walrus whilst he was stranded on an island in Canada. He says that never before has he had a more fulfilling friendship with anyone but that walrus, who he named Mr. Tusk. During this story, Wallace begins to fall asleep. So either Wallace is being very rude here, or there's some shit in that tea. There, there. It'll be all right, Mr. Tusk. Oh, fuck me. He's going to become a walrus, isn't he? So we get a flashback to Wallace and his girlfriend, Allison. We learn that Wallace is lying to Allison, saying that his friend Teddy does not want her to go with him to Canada as it affects how he works. But later we learn that Wallace is actually planning on cheating on Allison. So Wallace wakes up with no leg. Howard tells a panicked Wallace that the doctor had to remove his leg as he was bitten and paralyzed by a brown recluse spider. You know, the spider that can't paralyze people. Howard is clearly lying, making up excuse after excuse about how the doctor had to remove all the phones from the house as to not disturb him. Wallace knows that Howard is lying, but Howard doesn't seem to care. After all, he can't exactly escape. Later at dinner, Wallace snaps. Let me out of this chair, you fucking psycho! Let me out! Howard then sits up out of his wheelchair and begins telling Wallace what is really going on. And my god, this scene is terrifying. The acting from both ends is just perfect. And the whole time there's this non-diegetic thumping sound, which is just quiet enough so that it kind of puts a sense of panic into the viewer, but it's also kind of hard to notice it at first. Combine this with the dingy-ass lighting and you have a perfect storm of oh fuck. Howard tells Wallace that he has constructed a realistic walrus costume and he's going to surgically attach it to Wallace. This is to reunite with his old walrus companion, Mr. Tusk. So I've heard of furries and I've heard of scalies, but I guess now thanks to Kevin Smith, we have the terrestrial marine mammal version of this. So we cut back to Allison, who is now sleeping with Teddy because she knows what Wallace is planning on doing. On the bright side, however, whatever Wallace is doing right now, it's probably the opposite of fucking. Unless he's into it, I guess. Later on, Wallace finds his phone and leaves Allison and Teddy a voice message telling them to call the cops. Don't ask me why he didn't call the cops. But alas, he is caught by Howard. The next morning, Allison hears the voice message and tries to call back Wallace, but it's too late. Howard has already begun the process. He starts making some modifications to Wallace's body so he can be fit in the suit. Oh my f Fuck, that is horrific. The inside of his arms are partially sewn onto his body so he has restricted arm movement. Oh, and also he now has no legs. Meanwhile, Allison and Teddy travel to Canada to look for Wallace. They look for the name Howard Howe, but the police say they don't have any record of anyone in the area named Howard Howe. So we cut back to Wallace and Howard and the transformation is now complete. Get ready for the most horrific thing you will ever see. This is the moment I gave up on humanity. So we cut to Johnny Depp. <laughs> he plays a detective called Guy Le Point. 
and here we have an incredibly dramatic shift in tone. You see all this weird walrus stuff and it's actually fucking horrifying, but it's so batshit insane that it's slightly darkly comedic. And now we have what's essentially a Saturday Night Live sketch with Johnny Depp being a fucking weirdo with a heavy French accent who's flattening all his burgers down until they're two-dimensional. So Guy Le Pointe says that he believes he has met this serial killer. He says that he believes that he's attempted to do this many, many times, as they keep finding bodies which have been heavily mutilated in a very specific way. It is one fuck of a bummer to look at, I can tell you that. But they don't know exactly what he's doing yet. The only thing he says is a line which I find myself quoting a lot. This man is making a monster. So we cut back to the walrus shit and we get a very uncomfortably romantic scene. Please don't sing to him. The water's wide and I dare not. Oh god, now they're dancing. Fucking hell, what is this? So what I'm about to tell you makes things confusing. So when Howard was stranded on this island, he had to eat his walrus companion, otherwise he would starve. And moments after this, he was saved. Howard decides that this was an unfair fight, so Howard decided to create a new walrus friend so they could fight again. But this time, he would wear a walrus suit so they were of equal fighting skill. So Howard gets into his own walrus suit and they fight each other. Meanwhile, the song Tusk by Fleetwood Mac plays in the background. This might be the most insane scene in a movie ever. So as they're fighting, Allison, Teddy and Johnny Depp find his house and they break in. Eventually, Wallace manages to kill Howard with his tusks, mere seconds before he was found by the other three. Johnny Depp points his shotgun at Wallace like he's going to kill him, and Wallace being shot here, being put of his misery, would be a natural-ish ending, which is exactly why that is not how this film ends. Instead, and I'm not joking, we get a cut to one year later, Wallace is now a zoo attraction, because honestly, why fucking not? This ending, as unrealistic as it is, I don't even have any problems with it. It's the complete opposite of a boring ending, and with a movie like this, that's just perfect for an ending. Like, for god's sake, he's still eating raw fish, at least give him a lasagna or something. There is some justification for this ending, for example, there's a lot of subtext about what it means to be human, and that Wallace is mentally transformed into a walrus as well as physically. But honestly, I just like how fucking goofy it is. Oh, and the credits for this movie is a cover of the song Oh Wally Wally, sang by Gerard fucking Way. That's just amazing. So that was Tusk, guys. Why is this one of my favorite movies ever? Some people really hate this movie, and to be honest, I can't blame them. On a writing level, this movie's all over the place, but I can't say I have much I dislike about it. The pacing is good for the most part. It's funny and terrifying, which is great for a comedy horror. The acting is genuinely amazing. The cinematography is kind of goofy with a lot of crash zooms, but I kind of like that about it. The music is used really well. The practical effects look awesome. Like, tell me that the walrus design in this movie isn't actually amazing. I feel like this is the kind of movie only A24 could make. Like, most studios would hear half of this shit and be like, whoa, whoa, slow down there. But this movie had so much creative control that it's kind of hard not to respect it. Pretty much the entire idea for the screenplay of this movie came from a podcast with Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman, where they read an ad on Gumtree about this guy who was offering a room if you would wear a walrus suit for him. It was obviously a joke post and not real, but they thought it was funny enough to make a horror movie out of it. So they did. So let me know if you want me to cover any weird ass shit post body horrors. Farewell, I guess.